Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. This is a quick video to introduce you a game called Ready or Not. What is it? It's a tactical FPS shooter that thanks to the Predog Unreal Engine injector, it's possible to play it in VR with six degrees of freedom motion controls, which is absolutely amazing. I'm not exaggerating my reaction because I have to be honest, I was mind blown by how good this this game is in VR. Obviously, there are some things that are not perfect because it's not a native VR title, but uh, let me explain how good this game is. So stay with me and enjoy this video. I made a short guidance on how to get it working in VR, so skip to this timestamp if you want to know how. What struck me about this game in particular are the level of detail of the environments, which is absolutely incredible. Not only the level of detail of the textures, but also the lighting effects, because this game has ray tracing. The theme of the missions are extremely dark, and to be honest, quite unsettling. And in VR, this is uh, uh, somehow enhanced. For example, we, we found that there were some sort of probably cannibals. We found a group of people doing some strange rituals. The address and the sense of tension for each mission was palpable because if you take the, the wrong turn you're gonna die and very quickly check right but I, I, I should have checked left <laughs> you can change loadout based on the mission whether if it's night or day you can manage your team in single player and even you can play with the voice attack which allows you to give orders to your team without actually having to press any button. Bang and clear. Gameplay itself is pretty good. You, know, you have different game modes where you have to save hostages or you have disabled bombs and things like that. And you can also play with your friends in co-op, which uh, brings you another level of fun. I played with uh, Dead Pixel Gaming and we had quite a lot of fun in uh, trying to be as tactical as possible. I would have done a flashbang over there, but anyway. You would have wasted Please, the flashbang. <laughs> I told you, man. I told you. I told you. I fucking told you to do the thing. Please don't die. What? As you do always, okay? Oh, okay. Come on, mate. I'm, I'm gonna bridge All right, you. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, okay, fine. Things oh. went a little bit uh, down the drain, but that's not important. <laughs> important is enjoying this game with your friends. What people may not like is, for example, the lack of uh, hands or body parts. You, you can't see that because uh, the Unreal Engine injector profile hides it from the view. But to be honest, for me, this was not a showstopper. I completely forgot to have a body because I was concentrated on uh, executing the mission. Obviously, you don't have all the gesture and VR interaction you would have in a native VR title, but this does not detract from the experience. The only thing that is missing, obviously, compared to a native VR first-person shooter, is a coil, but to be honest, who cares? I don't care. You know, that, that would be perfect. I hope that someday we're going to have also recoil when using the UVR injector. But we don't know whether this is going to happen. So if you follow my ultimate guide to make it work with very few clicks, I promise it's going to be almost plug and play. And if you do have problems, just leave a comment down below so I can read it and I can help you the best as I can. The game is quite scalable. Thanks to the DLSS, it's possible to play this game at a smooth 90 frame per second. I played this game at the maximum detail, a few drops here and there. Obviously, this is with the RTX 4090. However, I know for sure that this game can be played very smoothly, even with the 2070 and above. So it's possible to play this game with a medium-end system. So don't be discouraged. My recommendation would be to buy this game. Whether you buy it on sale or whether you want to play it immediately, that's up to you. But I think it's really worth your time and you should play it. Because if you don't, you're missing out, believe me. In conclusion, buy this game. 
It's worth its price, and I think you'll have a lot of fun, even though it's not a native VR title. And it, in VR, it works extremely well, extremely well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you liked it, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more VR content. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. We are dead, signing out. Hey now, the tutorial. So the first thing you have to do is to go to the Discord or the flat screen to VR modding community. In the section UE games over here, you're gonna look for ready or not. And then you go up and you find the pinned messages, okay? You click on it and you will find a link to the Nexus mod page where you will find basically all the files that you need to download. So you click on that, okay? and you find a lot of instructions that are pretty much detailed. So if you haven't already, you have to download the UEVR injector, which you can find here. Okay, you scroll down and you will find the file uevr.zip. You download that in your download folder, you put it everywhere, but the only thing you have to make sure is to add an exclusion to your antivirus because it's gonna flag it up, okay? potentially. Once you do that, another thing you have to download is the latest UEVR backend.zip that is particularly needed for ready or not, okay? You can download it again, UEVR backend zip. Again, make sure that you add the exclusion of the antivirus in the folder that uh, it's uh, going to be located because otherwise the UEVR will not work. The next step is to go to this folder, app data, local, ready or not, saved config, Windows no editor and copy these two strings okay now we go into that directory are uh, ready or not and saved and then you go into config and then windows no editor okay and you find the file engine.ini you scroll down and i added these two lines okay as per instruction at this point the important part is to download the input.ini and the profile for the Unreal Engine VR injector. So let's do it now. Okay, I'll download it. And then we go back and we download the profile. Okay, done. We open the download folder and here we have the two files over here. You extract the input.ini here because you're gonna need this. Okay, you're gonna copy it and again you go into the uh, app data, same directory, same folder as before. Ready or not, saved, config, Windows no editor, and you see there is an input.ini. You copy that file over here and you replace it. I don't need to do that now. And that's what you're gonna do. And now, the important thing that uh, generally people get wrong at this point is that you have to rename this file, okay? Like exactly the name of the process that you're gonna run. Because if you import this file directly into the UV, UEVR, it's not gonna work. So you have to rename the profile that you just downloaded as this ready or not dash win 64 dash shipping okay so you rename it like that and you have then to launch the uevr we start as an administrator and to import config you go to download folder and you import it okay i don't need to do this now you click on open and then it's gonna do it okay in the event you already have a uh, ready or not profile you have to go on the open global directory and delete already what was there okay so you have to delete this file for example i'm not gonna do it now but you're gonna delete it and then you close this and then you import config again you can go and download and import the the, the file you just downloaded okay
Fantastic! Now you are basically ready to go. So you launch the game as normal from Steam, making sure that perhaps DirectX 11 is selected. Then you go to the injector, select the profile ready or not, and then you push on inject. And it should work in VR. Yes. So once it's in VR and you have in front of you this nice screen with the a real engine injector, what you will have to do, in my view, to make it work well, is to go to show the advanced option over here. You see, you tick this box, and then you go over here you go on the input side and you see I have selected the uh, from this menu over here the pad shifting method I've selected the gesture head plus left joystick uh, this is gonna help you selecting several things like lasers uh, or laser pointers or uh, the uh, automatic fire or semi-automatic fire of your weapon etc so you have to experiment a little bit um, and another thing that perhaps it wor is worth setting over here is i guess you go to you go to unreal and you disable the gui Okay, so I disabled it. So you, you don't have that annoying uh, uh, guy that you would have uh, into the flat game. Yeah, obviously, if you have the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling you know, and is giving you problem, you have to disable it from the settings from Windows. Uh, and also I would recommend to uh, launch the game if you have a virtual desktop uh, with the uh, VDXR as the open xr runtime in terms of performance you can go to the menu options and one thing i think one particular setting you have to disable and this setting is called the per object shadow this created me a lot of performance issues and uh, i took a lot of time to figure it out to be honest, doesn't make any visual difference. So just disable it. If you have problems with the uh, alignment of the weapons uh, and somehow the importing the profile doesn't work well for you, I would recommend you to follow the guidance from Dead Pixel Gaming, which I linked into the description. But if you have any problems, please do leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you very much for watching this guidance, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.